This week I've been driving this 2021 Porsche Cayman GTS. This has the four liter boxer six cylinder engine. It makes 394 horsepower, 309 pound feet of torque. You know me, I love Caymans. It follows the philosophy of what I like in a sports car to the T. And uh, this new 718 is just a phenomenal effort on Porsche's part. I really enjoyed driving this thing this week. Let's talk about what it's been like to live with some of the differences, I did drive a 718 GT4 a couple months ago. And uh, this is, might, this might be a Goldilocks middle child, kind of the sweet spot in the Cayman lineup. If you want a track car, you gotta get the GT4. But if you want a good daily driver, I really don't think you can beat this new Cayman in terms of comfort, driving enjoyment, tactility. It's pretty practical too. Let's show you guys the front and the trunk. You don't get the rear seats in a 911, of course, but you get a pretty decent amount of storage space. Pretty standard Cayman Boxster rear trunk area. It's a little wider, so you can fit longer items in here, but still not a ton of space. Up front, though, is where you really get a lot of cargo capacity. Pretty deep, pretty wide. You could fit a few carry-on suitcases there. I love the simplicity and the purity of this car. I think uh, Porsche has done a really nice job updating and evolving the design with this Cayman. It's maybe not as uh, sexy and curvy as it used to be, but it's a really sleek, simple, clean design, and uh, I think it looks fantastic. We have a valved exhaust. We'll turn that on. <laughs> it sounds fantastic. Few different drive modes normal sport sport plus and individual six-speed manual transmission is one of the best gearboxes i think i've ever used this is slightly longer of a throw than the gt4 but it's still just it's just about perfect really nice falls to hand i love that this is still a six speed not a seven speed like the 911 this car is a really cool spec to it. It's a little bit dark tonight, so I'm not sure if you can tell, but this has the race techs interior. It's basically Porsche's Alcantara suede. It's on the seats, it's on the armrest, it's on the shift boot, the steering wheel, and the headliner. It is a beautiful, beautiful interior. This also has the GTS interior package. This is a great spec. MSRP on this is around $88,000 with destination. This car, as spec'd, is just under 101,000 bucks. For that price, I don't know if I'd rather have this or a 911. I need to drive the new 992 to find out. Um, but this is on the top of my list as favorite cars for 2021 so far. This has been a phenomenal vehicle. Let's take it for a drive. We'll show you guys what it's like on the road. We have red seat belts, a red center tachometer, little digital gauge cluster to the right where you can cycle through a few different menus. You can see your GPS, your Apple CarPlay, tire pressure, gear changes, dyno graph. Not a ton of distracting driver assistance tech. This has a reverse camera, parking sensors, no radar guided cruise control, no lane keep assist, none of that nonsense. I love it. It does have stop start that you can engage and disengage and program to different drive modes. We'll start off in normal drive mode. This has a quiet exhaust, soft suspension. One of my favorite things about this car is that it's enjoyable and rewarding and fun to drive all the time. You're just driving to the grocery store, you're just taking a trip, you're just cruising in traffic in this thing, and uh, a couple snicks with the shifter, a couple gear changes, and it just is so satisfying to drive. This is one of those cars that makes every trip, every journey that much more enjoyable and that much more exciting. And this flat six sounds just phenomenal. Porsche just does everything right with these cars. steering feel. 
I get a lot of communication from this chassis. I know exactly what the front tires are doing. There's a pretty high limit for mechanical grip here. It does have adjustable suspension. That was in soft. It'll also go into stiff and sport plus. And the big difference with this four liter engine is the torque. Sixth gear, 70 miles an hour, 2,500 RPM or so, and I get into it, and it pulls, it accelerates. There's torque here, there's a lot of power. It's a pretty big difference from previous Caymans that I've driven. Definitely adds a lot to the driving experience, it makes things a lot more enjoyable. This is also a very comfortable car to live with. You turn the exhaust off, you put the suspension on normal, and once you get up to speed, once you get going, this is a really smooth and easy car to drive and live with on a daily basis. We'll also test the Bose sound system at the end of this video, I'll show you guys what that's like. Sitting here on the highway, we're revving at a little over 3,000 RPM. That's to be expected. People have always complained about the gearing in the Cayman and Boxster. I will say that with the extra power from this 4 liter flat 6, it's not as big of a deal to me anymore. Yes, I would like the excuse to shift gears more and to be able to shift gears more often without speeding in second constantly, but um, I don't know. I think the power and the gearing are finally well matched. And my only complaint would be that in second gear, you're speeding pretty much everywhere. But that said, you rev this out occasionally, you get it up to speed, you do a little pull, and it's gonna satisfy you. It's gonna check those boxes. It's gonna make you feel like you've, you've done the thing and you've gone out and enjoyed your sports car. Philosophically, I'm not sure about auto rev matching as a as a driver's tool, but that said, I can't argue with how well Porsche has executed it in this Cayman. It is incredibly nice. To hear the blip from that exhaust when you downshift. Probably the biggest improvement with this Cayman compared to previous generations is its responsiveness and its tactility. This is a really, really responsive car. It shares the dual mass flywheel from the GT3 and it just revs super quickly. <laughs> it's amazing. So you put it into normal, turn your exhaust on, and you want to rev match yourself. It feels super exotic, super special. The brake pedal is a little bit sensitive for perfect heel towing, but you have to kind of recalibrate your right foot to everything. If anything, it just makes it that much more satisfying when you get it right. And if you don't want to worry about it, you can turn on active rev matching in your drive mode settings and you're good to go. All that said, this is still a sports car. There's quite a bit of road noise from the tires, but at least it's comfortable. At least the rest of this car delivers and uh, you could easily daily drive this, no problem, and enjoy every single mile behind the wheel, commuting to work, going to the grocery, hitting a back road, taking it to the track. This is an awesome all-rounder. A 7,800 RPM redline. Love the way this thing sounds. Love the way it drives. It checks all the boxes. 
So, is there anything I don't like about this new Cayman? Well, I've spent a good amount of time in the 987 Caymans and Boxsters, and I can't help but feel that everything is a little bit lighter, and maybe you get a little bit less steering feedback, a little bit less brake pedal feedback in this new 718. That's not to say that it's worse or bad, it's just different. The controls in this car are a little bit snappier, a little bit lighter, a little bit more responsive. It's, uh, it makes the car feel quicker on its feet, so to speak, and a little bit less heavy. Um, we did a comparison video a couple days ago comparing this new car to the original 2006 Cayman S, and it was amazing to see the difference between you know, how fast the engine revs, this gearbox, the shift weight, the steering weight, the feel of everything. Um, I think what this car has maybe lost in feel because of its electronic power steering as opposed to hydraulic power steering, it has gained in response and excitement. And I think it's a, it's still, this is just as fun of a car to drive as the original Cayman was and as all the other generations have been. It is a little bit lighter and a little bit uh, more daily driver friendly, I think. And um, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want something super hardcore and super visceral, you might want to look at a GT3. But as it sits, I think this Cayman GTS is just about as perfect of a balance as you can get for a, a sports car on the street. Now, comparing this to the GT4, I had maybe about an hour in that car. I didn't spend a ton of time in it, whereas I've spent a few days in this. From memory, here's how I would sum it up. If you want a track car, if you want something that you can take out onto a road course a few times a year, get the GT4. Spend the extra money. It's worth it. Uh, you'll get it back someday when you sell it. This is definitely a track-worthy car. That's an amazing thing about most Porsches. You can just buy them and take them out to the racetrack, and they do fantastic. And I have no doubts that this will do that. But the GT4 is that much sharper. It has aerodynamic, it has cooling abilities that uh, this may not. And uh, I think if you're looking for a precision track tool, the GT4 is just that much sharper. But uh, as a daily driver, this is kind of the sweet spot. It's the perfect middle child. The more I drive this, the more I like it. It just gets better and better and better. There is a ton of a mechanical grip. The harder you push it, the more it gives you. Porsche whale just kicks in around 5,000 RPM. <laughs> I really do think this is one of the best new Porsches on sale. They nailed it with adding the 4 liter flat 6. Uh, I spent a little bit of time in a 718 with the 4 cylinder and my sentiments I think echo everyone else's. It was a fast car, it was a very capable car, it wasn't an emotional car, and this 4 liter brings all that excitement, all that drama, all that emotion back into the experience, and truly makes this a special car to drive, whereas the 4 cylinder Boxster in Cayman, I hate to say it, it just, it wasn't special, it lacked that special something, it sounded a little bit like a Subaru, and this, even though it's not that much quicker than the 4 cylinder turbo, it, uh, it just thrills in ways that the four-cylinder never could. And I'm really glad the Porsches brought this back and made it an option. It's pricey, but if you think about it, you track Cayman prices over the years. I mean, you got to pay to play, and this is still quite a bit cheaper than a comparable 911. And the fact that it's naturally aspirated, there's no turbocharging going on here, in my mind, Personally, this is one of the first cars I'd spend 100 grand on 
in Porsche's lineup. I haven't driven a 992-911, so I can't 100% speak to uh, the comparison there, but hopefully we'll get some time in one sometime soon, and uh, we can do that comparison. So while we're just cruising here, let's go in and listen to this Bose sound system. Take our suspension off of Sport, put it back in Normal, go to our sound system playlist. Porsche has worked with Bose for quite a while. with this Bose sound system for a sports car with a lot of road noise tire noise and just uh, a lot of things going on it's pretty good it sounds great no complaints I think for uh, the price for the extra thousand bucks or so on top of the standard audio system this is probably worth the upgrade it's one of Bose's better sound systems in uh, any of their vehicles I kind of put this up there with the new C8 Corvette it's a good sound system and uh, I think definitely worth the upgrade Well guys, I think that sums up the 718 Cayman GTS. Just an awesome all-rounder, an amazing sports car. Um, really have enjoyed driving this car this week. It's been a pleasure to share the experience with you guys. Uh, definitely a treat to have us this week. Stay tuned on Windy Road Magazine for more videos on this car. And uh, if you haven't already, check out our video comparing this 
2021 718 4 liter GTS to the original Cayman S 2006. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.